Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video here is going to take a lot of the information we've been talking about over the last 10 videos or so with collections and basically summarizing it. So we talked about what I would consider are the beginner collections. We talked about arrays, templatized arrays, and vectors. We've talked about their differences and when to use which, but maybe it's just been scattered across too many videos. I thought it would be ideal if I collected all that information and made a video on when to use which. So hopefully this video helps you clear everything up, and if you already got this stuff down, then you're free to jump to the next video. But before you do that, you need to check out our sponsor. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base, and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So up front, one of the big differences between arrays, templatized arrays, and vectors is whether or not you can assign one of them to another variable of the same type. So for example, let's say we create a vector. We call this stuff. And then let's say you assign some values to it. You can do that. Then we take stuff and we assign it back to another vector. So this one is called things and we assign it the value stuff. This is essentially going to copy that vector into this vector called things. You can do that with vectors and you can do that with templatized arrays but you cannot do that with the standard C style arrays. It's not going to let you. So when it comes to C style arrays, it's much harder to work with if you already have some variable that contains data and you wanna put it into that, you might have to iterate through that collection and assign it one at a time to this array. When you're working with vectors and templatized arrays, it's nice and simple. You can just do a copy by assigning the value to another variable. So that's the first big difference. That might come up, maybe not, not really sure, but it's, it's good to know. Now, when you start reading stuff on the internet, you'll find people saying, oh, this one's faster or this one's more optimized. And the majority of time, this is not going to matter. That's because where you are at in your learning, optimizing your applications should not be a huge concern. Usually, problems with your application speed is not going to come from what data type you used. Usually, it's going to come from the way you designed the system and basically the architecture of your application. This is a concept known as premature optimization. It's a very common problem with beginners where you're basically trying to optimize your application for speed, usually on the things that don't make the biggest difference. So maybe if you're building some really large scale applications, you really need to think about it upfront, but most of the times you don't have to worry about speed issues until you have a very obvious bottleneck in your application use. So what I'm telling you guys is don't worry about which one's faster when it comes to data structures. And these are all pretty much the same, but there are some other data structures out there you can use, some other data types. Don't worry about the speed right now, just worry about what is easiest to use in your application. So focus on ease of use and ease of developing over application speed. Later down the road, you can profile your applications, figure out what's causing issues, and you can speed up your applications. But for now, just focus on what's easiest. So the shortened version of this video, I know we're pretty far into it already, but just use vectors. They're overall easier to use and more scalable when it comes to managing a code base. So don't worry about arrays or templatized arrays unless you have a very specific use case where you need to use those, such as a project that requires them or a school project. Then you might wanna use those, but other times, use vectors. Now, if you're in the situation where you need to use the arrays and you have to choose between C style arrays or the templatized arrays, go with the templatized arrays. Again, they are better than the C style array. So, so far the templatized arrays and the vectors can be assigned to other variables of the same type. Another difference between those two and the C style arrays is that the C style arrays are passed by pointer. In other words, when you pass an array to a function, it decays to a pointer and basically forgets how large the, the size of memory reserved for that array is. So you usually have to pass an additional size. The significance of passing by pointer means that you can modify the array by default inside of the function, whereas the other ones, it's passed by value, so it's just a copy and you can't change 
the, the variable that you passed in by default. You have to pass by reference if you want to change those values. Both vectors and templatized arrays have a size method that you can use to get the size of the, the array or vector. Whereas when it comes to arrays, the standard C style arrays, you either have to have another argument if you're working with functions or you need to calculate that size. You could use the size of operator, for example. So if you take the size of the entire variable, divide it by how large each element is, so size of whatever data type you're working with, then you will get the length of that array. That's only going to work in the scope where you defined that array though. So overall you have arrays on one side and then you have the templatized array and vector on the other side. The only thing is that when it comes to the templatized array, it is also statically sized. So that is one way in which it's similar to the normal standard array. So that's a lot of information. So let me just write it out and hopefully it'll be nice and clear. All right, so here are the three types. Now let's distinguish. When it comes to static sizing versus dynamic sizing, we have static, static, dynamic. Now when it comes to passing these two functions, we have decaying to a pointer, value, value by default. You can do these by reference if you want. Related to how these things are passed is whether or not these types know their size. So for arrays, they don't know their size when passed to a function. These will have the member functions dot size, which will allow you to get the size. So this will return the number of elements, which is nice to have. This does not have that option. And last thing on here is what we talked about first is that you can assign them to different variables, specifically these two. All right, there you go. That is the summary of the three collections we talked about so far. Hopefully that makes it nice and clear on when you should use which. Most of the time though, you'll want to stick with vectors. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully that was helpful and be sure to subscribe to this channel as that really helps me out. And let's, uh, I'll see you in the next video because we're going to start talking about something new. Finally done with these collections. We'll probably use them some throughout the series, but we're done talking about the concepts and how to use them. And finally we can move on to something new. So I'm excited. Hopefully you are too. And I'll see you then.